Hey guys, welcome to another tutorial. Today we are going to be learning another very useful optimization technique in 2D. Uh, it's also very useful in 3D, but we will be doing the 2D case. And that is uh, culling using the camera clipping plane. Uh, so right now, uh, whenever, say we have all these zombies that we're rendering, we have our camera viewport, say it's looking right here. So it's only looking at uh, a, a small subset of these zombies. However, whenever we do our game loop, when we actually go to uh, draw, uh, which is in maingame.cpp, we just loop through all the zombies and draw all of them, all the humans and draw all of them, which means even though these zombies are not visible from the camera, we are still generating sprite batches uh, using all their coordinates, and that's just a waste of time. We know they're not visible, so there's no need to do all that extra work for them. Well, there's, an, um, there's a thing we can do uh, in 3D, it's called frustum culling, and 2D we'll just call it uh, camera culling. I'm not sure if that's the correct name for it. Uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to try to determine before we even draw these zombies if they are visible uh, from the camera. And to do that, what we're going to do is just do simple collision tests. So just like whenever we are doing collision between uh, agents and uh, the tiles, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to give each agent a bounding box. And we're going to collide that bounding box with the bounding box of the camera. Uh, you know, the, the actual... the uh, the viewport of the camera. So this one right here is not going to be colliding with this, so it's going to uh, return false and it's not going to be drawn. However, this one will be colliding, this one will be colliding, so we are going to draw those. It's actually really, really simple. So let's go ahead and give it a whirl and see if we can get above uh, 15 FPS with OBS running. I doubt we will, but we can give it a try. Uh, so what we're going to do is create a new method in our camera class. So we're going to go to camera2d.h and camera2d.cpp. We'll grab both of those. Uh, and we're going to make this a uh, public uh, member function. And it's going to be a bool. And we're going to say is uh, box in uh, view. Is box in view. That works. And we're going to, bas we're going to pass in a bounding box. Uh, and that will be a glm vec4. Uh, or we'll pass in two glm vec2s. That works. We'll say uh, const glm vec2 with an ampersand. Remember, that's the efficient way to do this. Uh, we'll do const glm vec2 position and const glm vec2 uh, dimensions. All right, so let's grab this and put it in the CPP file under convert screen to world. Put it right there. And it belongs to camera 2D. Oop. There we go. All right, and now what we can do here is we can use a little copy-paste magic, even though copy-paste is bad. Uh, we're going to grab this uh, collide with tile uh, function from agent. We're going to grab everything out of, here out of this, and we're going to modify it for our needs, because this is the same algorithm that we are going to need. Why did I do that? Drag and place. All right, put that right there. All right, now we're going to make... Uh, some modifications. Now, if we are colliding, we're not going to actually want to change the position or anything like that. We're just going to want to return true. Uh, so we're going to right here, we'll say there was a collision, return true, and then it'll be up to whoever called this function to determine what to do next. If this returns true, we're probably just not going to uh, draw the actual sprite. And then at the end here, we'll do return false. Always got to make sure you return something. All right, so we need to make a few more changes. Now, we have this tile radius, uh, and instead of tile radius, we'll make this the radius of our, or we'll, we'll make this the, uh, we're going to actually, since, since our, our camera is not a square, we can't just use radius. We actually have to use width and height. Uh, so the min distance is not going to work either, uh, because min distance is, right now we're we'll using it in the X and the Y, but we need min distance x and min distance y, since we're going to have an, an irregularly shaped tile here. It's not going to be a square tile. So min distance y. And we don't have agent radius, but we do have dimensions dot x here. So dimensions is going to be the radius of, actually, right. Dimensions is not going to be the radius. It's going to be the diameter. Uh, so we need to do dimensions divided by 2. All right, and for y, we're going to say dimensions y divided by 2. Now, instead of tile radius here, we're going to say screen width. Is it, uh, or is it width? Screen width, yes. And instead of 
uh, tile radius here, we're going to say screen height. There we go. And here we have center agent pause. Since we don't know if it's necessarily going to be an agent, it needs to be kind of generic here. We're just going to say center pause. And that's going to be equal to this position plus uh, this dimensions divided by 2. And since dimensions is a float, we should probably be making these into floats for consistency. There we go. Uh, and now for the distance vector, we are going to use center pos. Uh, so we'll say uh, center pos, and we'll, have a, we'll also need a center camera pos. Uh, so center pos will be the camera pos. Uh, no, center pos will be the agent position. And we'll do glm vec2 center camera pos. And that's going to be equal to underscore position, which is the position of our camera, plus, uh, and then glm vec2 screen width over 2 uh, and screen height over 2. Like that. So now we have the center position of whatever it is we're passing in, which in our case it'll be an agent of the parameters. Sure. And center position of the camera here. All right. And now we can get the vector from the input to, or from the camera, or it doesn't really matter, from the input to the camera. And that'll be center pos minus center camera pos. Now we don't need tile radius, so we can just delete that. Now here we're going to say instead of min distance, we're going to say min distance x, and here we're going to say min distance y. And this should do it correctly. Ah, except I did forget to, to take into account scaling. Now remember, for scaling, uh, we just divide by the scale before we actually add uh, the position here. So we need to do that for screen width and screen height. So let's actually make a new, uh, new variable here. We're going to say glm scaled dimensions. There's scaled screen dimensions equals, and we're going to say uh, glm vec2, uh, I did it again, glm vec2, scaled screen dimensions, equals glm vec2 screen width, comma, screen height, and all of that divided by scale. That was a bad copy paste. There we go. So that will scale our dimensions. And so now we need to replace dimensions. No, we need to replace screen width and screen height by scaled dimensions x and scaled dimensions y. Screen width is x, screen height is y. All right, that should work. Uh, remember, we only divide by the scale when we're doing the screen dimensions. We don't divide by the scale for the position because the position of the camera doesn't matter on the, uh, based on the scale. Now, I think this is correct. If it's off, it will be really easy to tell because we will have a bunch of invisible sprites. Uh, so let's go ahead and give this a test. Let's go to our actual main game and try it out. So what we're going to do is let's start with just humans, just for now. We're going to say if, and what is it, camera dot is box in view. And I actually got this backwards. This should be false. If we have a collision, we return false because it's no, I'm no, I'm completely wrong. It was correct. <laughs> if it, if there's a collision, we return true. All right. So if is box in view, and for the uh, what is it uh, position, we need to make a a position uh, vec two. So let's do glm vec two agent pos, and we'll do glm vec two agent dims, and for agent dims, since they're all the same, we can just initialize it to agent uh, radius times 2, like that. And for agent position, we're going to need to set this each time. So we're just going to say, uh, I think we can actually just pass in uh, humans.position, or get position. Humans i, uh, is it dot? It's arrow, get position. Very simple. So we don't need agent pos, we just need agent dims. And we can go and make this const since they're all the same for now. 
If we had different sized agents, we wouldn't be able to do this, of course. All right, and agent dims. So if it's in view, then we draw. Otherwise, we don't draw. So let's go ahead and try it. Fingers crossed, everyone. Hopefully it works. If not, I'll pause the video and figure out what math I did wrong. I often make simple mistakes. I think it's working. All right, we're still at 15 FPS. Uh, now, in order to actually test if it's working, what we can do is uh, fake the scale. Like right now, we are, we are assuming it's working because we can see everything, but we don't know if it's actually culling things off camera. Uh, to do that, we're going to fake it a little bit. We're going to cheat. And whenever we divide by scale, we're actually going to make the scale uh, larger. So we're going to divide by scale times 2. So we should see a box-shaped uh, kind of cutout uh, in our, our humans. And it looks like it's not working. Maybe it was supposed to be divided by 2. Let's try divided by 2. Maybe that made it bigger. When in doubt, just arbitrarily switch between your operators until it works. No, it doesn't seem to be working. All right, I'll figure out what's going on here. All right, guys, it was a few very simple bugs. Uh, first of all, the center camera position already is position. I forgot that when we store the position of the camera, we are actually storing it as the center of the camera. So we don't even need to add these dimensions right here. Uh, secondly, right here, we did add dimensions.x divided by 2, but we should also be doing scaled screen uh, dimensions.x divided by 2 here. Since the screen width is the diameter, but we actually want the radius for the AABB collision. So we'll need to divide by 2 there, divide by 2 there. And this is indeed multiplied by 2. I was correct the first time. All right, so now we should get a little box. Uh, it, is, it is indeed working correctly. Uh, here we go. So now you can see as I move around, there is a box surrounding the player. Uh, this is the, uh, remember we multiplied by 2, so this is actually as if we were zoomed in uh, closer. Uh, and it's culling all of, uh, all of the uh, humans outside of that. So we're not drawing as many things, and it's going to be faster. Uh, notice we're not culling the tiles. Uh, remember the tiles are all in one big sprite batch, and they never get re-rendered again each frame. Uh, so there's no real reason uh, to, to do culling on it, unless it was just an absolutely huge world. Uh, the next step in making our... And notice we're not culling the zombies. I just haven't put that logic in. We'll do that here in a second. Uh, the next step in optimizing our game would be to use what's called spatial partitioning. Uh, spatial partitioning is really, really, really powerful, and it's a really good way to have like thousands and thousands and thousands of units all over the place uh, without having to constantly calculate collision with all of them and without having to, uh, uh, you know, do the screen uh, check against every single one of them. It's, it's, really, it's a really, really powerful way to optimize your, your 2D games and your 3D games. Uh, so yeah, write that down. Spatial partitioning. I will be doing tutorials on it, just not yet. I want to do some other things first, like sound, uh, before we actually get to spatial partitioning. Um, so let's stop multiplying by 2 now that we know it's right. Uh, and let's come back here, and let's do this for all of the uh, different agents. So we'll do that for zombies as well. So this would be zombies, dot get position, and then uh, we can also do it for bullets. Uh, actually, let's not do it for bullets. We could do it for bullets, but the bullets don't really go very far, and there aren't a whole lot of bullets anyways, so I'm not really worried about it. If you want to do it for bullets, feel free. Uh, okay, so we have humans and zombies being culled. I feel like I'm forgetting something. I feel like there was something else I wanted to show you, but I think uh, we are good. Uh, let's go ahead and add a little comment in Camera 2D. Uh, simple... AABB test to see if a box is in the camera view. All right, and we'll save it, and let's run it one last time just to test and make sure that we can see everything, make sure we don't have any improper math in here. Uh, and, yep, everything looks good. Oh, and if you're noticing, uh, a lot of times these uh, sprites are, like, getting stuck in the wall. That is because we are generating a 1,000 sprites. We're just generating so many sprites, and they get crammed in here, and they end up pushing each other into the wall and things like that. After a while, they should all kind of pop out of the wall, but when we first generate the world, even though we're testing to make sure they're not generating directly on top of a, uh, a little um, tile, it can still happen that two or three or four people will spawn in pretty much the same place and then kind of push each other out and collide and get crammed in here and then... Uh, get stuck in walls. That's something that's actually pretty easy to fix. So if you want to try to fix that yourself, go ahead. I'm not too worried about it. I kind of want to uh, 
work on particles here so we can get some blood, maybe some corpses, maybe some sound, things like that in the next few tutorials. I know we've been spending a while on this game, but I'm just having fun with it. I hope you guys are too. If uh, you want to see any other games uh, that we should create, let me know. I'm actually thinking about doing something special for when we get 2,000 subscribers. I'll probably do another challenge episode uh, and work through something that a few people have been asking for. Uh, so, yep, thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.